way those tears, child, there's no need to cry. Stand up on your feet now, lift your head up high. Don't wait till tomorrow to lay down your sorrow. Freedom is here today. Away those tears, child, put down your shame. Oh, I see an empty grave. I hear the heavens waking. Angels in jubilation That stone's been rolled away I feel the darkness breaking I bet the devil's shaking Somebody celebrate I see an empty Angels in jubilation That stone's been rolled away I feel the darkness breaking I bet the devil's shaking Somebody celebrate I see an empty grave The apple, the curse, three days in the ground. Christ our Lord is risen, death couldn't hold. Good morning and welcome to the Easter Sunrise Service of the Saratoga Springs United Methodist Church. We wish each and every one of you were here with us right now, but since you can't be with us physically, we know you're out there and praying with us and rejoicing with us on this Easter day. So happy Easter and we'd like to begin with a word of prayer. So would you pray with me? Dear God, as dawn comes forth in this early hour, our eyes are opened through the warmth and brightness of the light. As Isaiah prophesied, the people who walk in darkness shall see a great light, a light that will shine on all those who live in the land of the shadow of death. May we bring forth the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, to empower our journey going forward. We thank you for this unique blessing we have before us this day to welcome Jesus from the grave in the quiet still of the morning. Touch our hearts and open our minds to all that Jesus Christ can represent in our lives. We pray in the peace of the dawning day. Amen. I come. 
father do is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the son of God discloses and he Stay in the garden with him, though the night around me is falling, but he bids me go through the voice of woe, his voice to me is called. gospel reading for this morning can be found in the book of John chapter 20 verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni which means teacher. 
Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers, and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Mary is the first witness to the good news of the resurrection. Good for Mary. Her transformation from weeping to joy fulfills Jesus' promise earlier, found in John chapter 16, 20 and 22. Truly, I tell you, you will weep and mourn, but the world will rejoice. You will have pain, but your pain will turn into joy. So you have pain now, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one, no one will take your joy from you. Mary recognizes Jesus only when he calls her by name, because we know that Jesus is the Good Shepherd who knows his own and calls them, each of us, by name. Then Jesus leaves Mary for the time being, but instructs Mary to tell the disciples and share the news that she has seen the Lord. In some way, each of us today, being alone or with a few close loved ones we have been sheltered together with for an extended period of time, mirrors that first resurrection experience of Mary's solo encounter with the risen Christ. This morning you will hear no trumpets, no triumphant singing of the Hallelujah Chorus, no crushing numbers of believers gathered in the sanctuary to loudly rejoice at the resurrection miracle. That will happen again at another time when we can safely be close together again. We have been preparing for this day to come since Ash Wednesday, when little did we know how drastically the world around us would change since then. Many of us on Ash Wednesday decided to sacrifice or give something up for the 40 days of Lent, only to go right back to it once Easter comes. I've been guilty of that same thing myself. Years ago, my buddies and I all agreed to give up all desserts for Lent. And we stayed faithful to that pledge. We had no desserts for the entire time from Ash Wednesday until 12.01 a.m. on Easter Sunday morning when we would come together at the Howard Johnson's restaurant in Wayne, New Jersey and break our fast by indulging in these rich, decadent desserts and then later, of course, top it off with Easter chocolate. This really didn't do much for us or our souls much good in the long run. I think, though, this year we might take the object of our Lenten sacrifice and boldly decide to continue to give it up going forward for good. If we could do it for 40 days, we surely could do it indefinitely. And for those of us who did not give up anything for Lent, now would be a great time leading into Easter tide to find something that we'd like to try to eliminate from our daily routines and give it up and see what a difference it can mean in your life. Perhaps it's connected with something you've already been forced to give up as a result of the isolation we're going through right now. Think prayerfully and respond as God leads you. This morning, I don't need a loud, joyful celebration surrounding me in order to know that Jesus Christ has risen from the grave and is alive. 
I feel my heart pounding and racing with the love of Jesus and the promise that he has died and risen again to save us from our sins. It gives me goosebumps to know he is with me through the darkest of days and the happiest of moments. And each of us needs to do as Mary did and carry the good news to all we know virtually and eventually one to one. We cannot suppress this or hold it only unto ourselves. I know deep down in my heart that Jesus can keep me strong during these days of sadness and loneliness and hardship. He can keep us all strong during these times for we will rise up and be stronger than ever when this crisis is a thing of the past. An old favorite hymn of mine reassures me of Jesus' constant presence. I'd like to share a verse of the hymn with you, concluding with the promise laid out in the simple refrain I know many of you already know, perhaps could sing along with me. There's within my heart a melody Jesus whispers sweet and low Fear not, I am with you Peace, be still In all of life's ebb and flow Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Sweetest name I know Fills my every longing Keeps me singing as I go Will you pray with me? Dear God, we thank you for the blessing of your Son, Jesus Christ who conquered the powers of sin and death and rose up into new life. May each of us be open, heart and soul, to the new life that can only come from knowing Jesus Christ as our Savior and allowing him to capture our heart, mind, and spirit. Wherever we may be this morning, may we be drawn together by the love and affection we share for one another and continue to reach out to one another in creative and thoughtful ways until we come together once again. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. Jesus is risen, is risen indeed. Happy Easter, everyone. And thank you, Glenn, for your words of hope and promise, reminding us of Mary's encounter, that first Easter sunrise, the encounter that reminds each of us that there are new resurrections each and every day. Even in the midst of what we're going through right now, I encourage you to have eyes to see and ears to hear. I have been reading this Kneeling in Jerusalem book by Anne Weems every Lent since I purchased it. And I found this, this prayer this morning from Anne Weems, this poem that I want to share with you, in search of new resurrections. We in the church are in danger of becoming a tearless people, unable to rage even in a starless abyss. We have limited a smiling society, glossing over the hurt, the oppression, the peacelessness of earth. Or we have become caustic and cynical and despairing, insisting on looking the other way as our church members crawl to the altar, the scraps of their lives in their arms. We were created for covenant keeping, and yet we're in danger of becoming a blind-hearted people buying into the system, placing our hope with kings and corporations. Have we not seen, have we not heard? We persist in clinging to the way things are or were, or eagerly placing our faith in the newest religious fad, 
the latest book on how-to Christianity in 10 easy steps, or the current slogans presented as though they were the very living Word of God. We are programming and papering ourselves into perpetuity and rationalizing and excusing our immorality. We spend our energy in complaining, glooming, forecasting our future together. We panic for positions in employment and committee, with each special interest group vying for the first place in the kingdom of God. Perhaps, perhaps now is a time for remembering that Jesus stood in the Jordan to be baptized with others. Long ago, casting his lot, not with the good religious people, but with the poor, wherever the poverty might emerge. His name is Emmanuel, and yet individually and corporately we have named him God with me. Have we not seen, have we not heard, in the light of the cross, the alternative is anything but hopelessness. On the contrary, there is every scriptural indication that we are called to change who we are into the kingdom of God. Where change is possible, new resurrection looms. I believe we're on the edge like Mary was that morning on the edge, we may be weeping now, but we are going to grab a hold of joy in search of new resurrections where change is possible. May it be so this Easter day with you and your loved ones. In Jesus' name, amen. Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. It is blessing to be with you and celebrating the living Christ together. Thank you, Glenn, for bringing us the message and the gospel and the witness of Mary. We too have seen the risen Lord and Jesus has called us by name and so we respond. We can't help it. We like Mary have a witness that needs to be shared. We want to thank you for your generous witness to the support of this congregation and its ministries serving and helping those in desperate need right now. We thank you for those that are sending in envelopes and checks and using the electronic giving. But in these times of isolation, there's an opportunity for us to respond to God's faithfulness with the witness of God's love that is within us and share the witness just like Mary did. Two words from Helen Keller come to me and inspire me in this moment. Helen said, I cannot do everything, but I can do something, and I must not fail to do that something that I can do. So if you're alone, or maybe isolated with family or friends, I pray that today and tomorrow and every day you do something good to witness to the love and power and living God in your life a word, a call, an exercise, a gift, a rest, a sharing, a serving, to do something. And then to remember that even though you might be isolated, each one of us doing something makes a difference in the world. And that brings me to Helen's other quote, alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. And she was speaking of how she was able to communicate to the world because of her teacher who was able to help her speak. I pray that as you and I and all of us give of ourselves one thing every day and write down and remember what we do to witness to the love of God and our generosity, we can respond to the call and remember that Jesus lives now and always. Blessed Easter to each one of you, and we look forward to that time when we can be together again and celebrate the presence of God within us. Amen.
Happy Easter. Share the good news. We have seen, we have heard, we believe that where change is possible, new resurrection looms. May the God of life, of joy, of peace and hope be with you now and always. In the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in you. This is the day that the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be